be an explosive, fast-paced offense? Maybe. Will Tua be able to make all the throws? Maybe. But also, let's not forget, they play in a division with the Bills and the Patriots. Pump them brakes. Well, I think their new all-world wide receiver would beg to differ. Yesterday, he was on Sirius XM <laughs> NFL Radio. Tyreek Hill, he had high hopes for this Dolphins offense this season. Take a listen. I've had a chance to, to just watch Tua, you know, sling the football around. And the guy can actually throw the ball, you know, all over the field, you know, and, you know, he has so many weapons, you know, at his disposal, you know, that is crazy. You know, he got Jalen, myself, Raheem, and as you say, he got pass catching tight ends. This offense is going to be crazy. So I'm just here to just say, get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a great season for the Miami Dolphins. Channel a little, little T.O. there. Best hype man since Don Magic won. This dude is really the best hype man. So let's say Tyreek Hill is white. right, Jeff. What is the ceiling for this Dolphins team? Oh, it's playoffs. And listen, when I look at this football team, that they, they are loaded up. I mean, to his point, he's making no mistakes in what he's saying. Tua is going to be the absolute key here. But let's not forget, Mike McDaniel, when he was in San Francisco as the offensive coordinator, they led the league in per play, right, per play average. So this guy understands how to create a run game that will support Tua and this wide receiving core and tight end group that he's talking about. They will have explosive plays because of the speed they have. I like what he's saying. Again, I think the playoffs are the ceiling. I don't think they push, push much through that. I also wanted to ask Sam, how come he didn't mention the Jets in that division? And he just wrote them off already? I mean, I know Greeny's not there to stab yeah. the knife in him, but I just I just want to see that out there. Put that out for a man out you. Yeah. <laughs> the quarterback is still injured, right? The quarterback is still injured, so we, we'll see. Yeah. We'll the see. answer to that is yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, what do you think? Ceiling for this team? Yeah, definitely playoffs and potentially winning the playoffs for the ceiling for the Dolphins. Like, if everything goes according to plan, this offense will be close to unstoppable. And the reason I say that is because you have multiple guys that at least football speed are 4-3 or even faster. Like, Tyreek Hill is 4-3 football speed. Jalen Waddle, 4-3 actual speed. Raheem Mostert, we saw what he's able to do at the running back position. For me, it, it puts so much stress and pressure on defenses. Even if it's not taking the top off of a defense, you have players that could catch a five-yard slant and take it 70. And so, That's for right. me... This team could be extremely dangerous if they put it all together. Okay, but then look at their first four games because this is not kind at all. Let's put this up. Patriots at Ravens, Bills at Bengals. So, Jeremy, we talked about this earlier. What is the ceiling for this team Especially when you look at those first four games. Ceiling is a two seed, baby. I'm wow. Two seed. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. A lot would have to happen. Buffalo would have to sort of win, you know, lose some games that you wouldn't expect. All those teams would have to not show up for those games, <laughs> yeah, but right? Look, look at the AMC. They're like 12 teams yeah. that could either make the playoffs, get a divisional crown. Like, it's going to be chaos in the AFC. So, you, you heard Tyreek Hill. For all the pumping that he's done of Tua as the next Joe Montana publicly, he did say <laughs> something that is matter of fact, that look at all the weapons Tua has right. at his disposal. And that is absolutely true. You combine that with a really good defense that helped them win 19 games the last two years, even with some quarterback questions. Now they have the stability. I, I'm pretty bullish on them right now. And he may be right. Tyreek Hill may be right. I mean, there, there's a piece that has to do with, like, confidence and belief. Yeah. Mike McDaniel believes in Tua. He has, yeah. like, like Tua's he done interviews where he said, man, it's good to have uh, it feels different is what he said. It feels very, very right. different. He has a coach who believes in him. So you have a coach who, like, like Jeff Saturday just said, was a part of a team that was the number one in the NFL in yards per attempt, so he knows how to push the ball down the field. You also have a, a coach who believes in his quarterback. Sometimes that's all you need to see a turnaround. And so, if Tyree Kill is right, Jeremy, you might be right as well. Yeah, it's a little like what they're doing in San Francisco. Give him all the pieces he needs to let him do what he can do based on his talents. Jeff, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, I, again, what Sam said, I'm going to reiterate it. Like, with, with the, the coupling of Mike McDaniel, the development of a quarterback, and listen, I love Brian Flores, I, what he was doing down in Miami, and it was kind of getting sabotaged. We've already heard of all that from, from, the, from the management side of it. But th this is a player who is going to be developed in an offense that we have seen the productivity in it year after year. So expect big things. If that run game gets going, and they added Armstead, uh, they got Connor Weaver, so, so they've done some things to get guys in places. Hunt's still there. So, so so they're going to be a better up front team if they can physically challenge teams. Man, the back end of this def back end of defenses will be exposed. There's Let's talk Packers Chiefs. He's hosting the Packers on Thursday. And look at this, Patrick Mahomes 
starts yeah. out on the field, honoring late Hall of Famer Len Dawson, recreating that Dawson. infamous choir huddle. You see the picture right there, that iconic Not image. And then a few seconds later, Mahomes hyping up the crowd, wouldn't play a snap. Neither would Aaron Rodgers, so Jordan Love was the man on this night. And right here, dropping back, hitting Samore Torre for the 19-yard reception, right on the money there. A minute later, Love connecting with Amari Rodgers. Looking good early, 15-yard completion. Later in the drive, Love gets it to Torre again. He tries scoring. Can he get it in? No. Stopped at the one. Chiefs win it 17 to 10. But Aaron Rodgers, he spoke after the game about his new receivers and had high praise for Devontae Adams. I have so much love and gratitude for that man. The, the way he made my job so much easier. We obviously miss him. I was watching some of his highlights of the day. You know, he's one of those transcendent players. You know, I, I think I'm like a Steph Curry. People are trying to copy him, but it's just you can't do it because you're not Devontae. So we can try and teach it and help our guys out. But at the end of the day, there's only one Devontae, and we're going to miss him. But we're going to find a way with the guys we got. I love our young group of guys. They're coming together. Okay, so a little credit for the young guys, but there's only one Devontae. He definitely has reason to speak so highly of him, but it's likely going to take a big effort on his end to replace Adams' production on the field this season. Adams was targeted 167 times on passes from Rodgers last season, nearly 100 more times than the next closest player on the Packers, who was running back Aaron Jones. All right, so... <laughs> the big question now becomes, I, you know, I love it. Look at Jeff already yeah. laughing. What are you laughing about? Yeah, let, let me just start here, dude. <laughs> Can we just admit we're getting trolled a bit, right, yes. by Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams? Like, Devontae Adams with the whole Michael Jordan thing. Now he goes back with the Steph Curry thing. Like, and, and even the little snicker afterwards, right? Like, you, you saw him giggle to himself when he said it. Transcendent player, blah, blah, blah. Like, I get it. We get it. You guys were an incredible duo. But I just love the fact that they're kind of taking shots at us as we're as we're talking them up about their receiving core. <laughs> of course he is. He knows how to work us, and here we are talking about him. So let's keep talking about him, Macho. Can this group of wide receivers make up for the loss of Devontae? Uh, I, think, I, I think they can, but it won't just be the wide receivers. I think okay. it'll be the running backs as well. Last year, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon caught a combined 86 passes out of the backfield. There was talk that maybe that could be more. Even if the, we t Everyone's saying, man, the young wide receivers may not be able to step up. Even if they don't, we've seen Aaron Rodgers be able to sustain offenses without his number one receiver. He's That's thrown right. it to backs in the backfield. He also has uh, young receivers that are coming back, right? Christian Watson is back off of PUP. And so I think that Aaron Rodgers is, is a good enough player to be able to help his offense go even without – even without, what do you say, Michael Jordan or Steph Curry? Every, even without, even without his, 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 his Robin to his back. All the greats come back. Or Giannis, whoever it is. Jeremy, yeah. what are you hearing about the Packers in conversations around the league? Well, I'm hearing if Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams are trolling us, then Rodgers is about to troll the whole league with his ah. play, getting it done without Devontae Adams. Because the feeling around the league is like, hey, they're paying him $50 million a year to get this done. And he always has with all the receivers he's had in the past. Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb. Greg Jennings, all these guys did well. Yep. So they're going to rely heavily on that running game. But they're, they're excited about their defense, too. So there oh. might be a little more ball control, less airing it out. But it's going to be a really good overall attack in a wide-open NFC. Wow. Hey, can we put up those receivers again, the guys he's throwing to, led by Alan Lazard there with the most yards, about 500 or so last year. So, Jeff, I look at this list of receivers, and I say this is all well and good. But really, you're replacing these guys with Devontae Adams in a way. Can they expect the same level of greatness not having that great receiver among these guys. They do expect it. And, right, it's a great yes. point, but they, they expect it. And, and I can guarantee you Aaron Rodgers expects it. He understands who Devontae Adams was and how good of a football player he is. He also understands how good of a quarterback he is. And the truth is if you watch the great ones, you watch the great quarterbacks, it, irrespective of their receivers, Tom Brady's done it, Peyton Manning's done it, Drew Brees has done it. Like these guys create great yeah. receivers as well. It's not just mm -hmm. one way, right? It takes both. And I think with Aaron Rodgers telling you where he wants you on the route, the timing of the route, he understands how to get guys open. And again, let's not ever forget, too, they're an off-schedule type team. There are times when Aaron will hold it, and it's called a scramble drill, hold the ball for that split second, the receiver breaks off and has these big yards. I, I do not have any doubt this offense is still going to yeah. roll to Sam and Jeremy's point. This offense will be a prolific offense. And however they have to design it, I believe in Matt at LaFleur, I believe in Aaron Rodgers. They will put yeah. up numbers, and, and we'll all still be talking about Devontae Adams and, and Aaron Rodgers as Steph Curry 